In this episode, the Crew Dragon capsule supporting CRS-20 returns from station, SpaceX tests emergency escape baskets at LC-39A, and in Boca Chica, SN4 construction is happening rapidly. Starship Update Last week Friday, April 3rd, during the early morning hours, SN3 was destroyed during cryogenic pressure testing. A few hours after the incident occurred, Elon took to Twitter speculating a bit that the failure may have been due to a test configuration mistake, but it was necessary for the team in Boca Chica to review the data to confirm this. A couple days later, Elon returned to Twitter to confirm that this was actually the case. SN3 was destroyed due to a test configuration error. There was insufficient pressure in the LOX tank to maintain the heavy load exerted on it by the CH4 tank. He further noted that there are redundant pressure control valves that help to keep the tank pressurized. It's a new system and SN3 was simply commanded wrong. Rockets are hard. Fortunately, as I mentioned in the last video, a test configuration mistake is a pretty good sign, as it indicates that SpaceX doesn't have to make any major modifications to the SN4 design moving forward. They just have to improve testing configurations. Progress on SN4 Again, quite luckily, not all was lost during cryogenic pressure testing. The engine skirt section of SN3 escaped the test mostly unscathed, and as such, the pace of SN4 construction has greatly benefited from the reuse of a segment of that section. Many of the main structures that will make up SN4 are also already complete. Avdome flipped and header tank integrated. On Saturday, April 4th, the main tank section with the common bulkhead was flipped. Just two days later, on Monday, April 6th, Elon shared a photo of a close-up of the methane header tank integrated into the common bulkhead. This image sort of gives a better visual representation on header tank placement, while this one gives a better sense of the actual scale of the tank. The placement of the header tanks has evolved as the Starship design has changed. In the 2017 design concepts, the header tanks were placed within the liquid oxygen tank. In the Mark 1 Starship design, the header tanks were later moved further forward and placed in the nose cone section to counter the weight of the engine. Just as a reminder, as Elon mentioned previously, back in February of 2019, the header tanks are required for landing burns, or the engine will suck in a bubble. They are separate in order to have greater insulation and minimize cryogenic boil-off, avoid sloshing on re-entry, and not have to press up the whole main tank. In addition to the photo of the header tank, Elon also shared a photo of the Rapture engines on site in Boca Chica. He also noted that each of these engines pictured are slightly different and Raptor progress continues to evolve rapidly. I've mentioned previously that given the turnaround time between the destruction of SN1 and the completion of SN3, SN4 could be ready in as little as a month. But given the current rate of progress that we're now seeing in Boca Chica, it looks like SN4 may be ready much sooner. Falcon 1 achieved orbit on its fourth try, so hopefully the fourth time's a charm for Starship. Crew Dragon Update On Friday of last week, April 3rd, some new footage surfaced online of Benkin and Hurley undergoing dress rehearsal ahead of Demo 2. The dry dress rehearsal was conducted back on January 17, 2020, prior to the Crew Dragon in-flight abort test, which took place on January 19th. The video gives an incredible behind-the-scenes look of what we could actually expect to see on the Demo 2 launch day. It shows Benkin and Hurley suiting up, getting fit checks done, boarding a Tesla Model X, and finally being escorted by NASA security and the SpaceX team to the launch tower. It's very similar to the suit-up and walk-out process we've seen during NASA's history, but with SpaceX's new design and the Tesla Model X, everything looks incredibly sleek and futuristic. Testing Escape Baskets Emergency Egress Exercise On Friday, April 3rd, NASA and SpaceX teams also successfully completed an emergency egress exercise at LC-39A at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The primary objective of the exercise, according to NASA, was to demonstrate the team's ability to safely evacuate crew members from the launch pad during an emergency. NASA goes on to state in a blog post that the teams rehearsed locating injured personnel on the 265-foot level of the launch tower, loading them into the pad slideware baskets, where they'd safely descend from the tower and then be loaded into mine-resistant, ambush-protected vehicles. The launch escape baskets offer the crew a quick way to evacuate the pad in the case of an emergency like a fire. In a case where the rocket exploded on the launch pad, which is an extremely rare case, the Super Draco thrusters would act to propel the astronauts a safe distance away from the rocket. He did state that it'd be like flying out of a giant fireball. Speaking of Demo 2 and NASA's commercial crew program, Boeing Starliner Update. 
On Monday, April 6, Boeing announced that it has decided to refly its orbital flight test mission at its own expense in order to demonstrate the capabilities of the Starliner system. The exact date of the OFT has not yet been confirmed, but the test is expected to occur sometime later this year, possibly in October or November. To give some context here, the original OFT mission was launched back on December 20, 2019. The mission was originally planned as an 8-day mission in which Starliner would rendezvous and dock with the ISS. The original OFT, however, did not follow that trajectory. In the case of the actual OFT test, an anomaly with the mission elapsed timer on Starliner caused the spacecraft to believe it was in an orbit insertion burn when it was not. So to clarify, the spacecraft did not perform the orbit insertion burn, but the spacecraft's attitude control thrusters were fired at the incorrect time consuming critical amounts of fuel that would have been needed to rendezvous with the ISS. More Starliner software issues Back in February of this year, NASA revealed that in addition to the mission elapsed timer error, during the OFT, Starliner also experienced an additional software issue that could have resulted in the collision between the crew module and the service module upon re-entry if the issue was not detected during the test. The initial orbital flight test was far from flawless and eventually led to a decision by NASA to review Boeing's safety culture. So Boeing's decision to refly the mission seems commendable. As NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine has stated in the past, it's extremely beneficial to have dissimilar redundancy. So in the event that there's a problem with one launch provider, another spacecraft is available. If Boeing can meet its timeline for the new OFT, then it's likely that we could see the Crew Dragon capsules supporting SpaceX Crew-1 and CST-100 Starliner docked at the space station at the same time, which would be a pretty cool sight. In a statement released by the company, Boeing said that it's committed to the safety of the men and women who designed, built, and ultimately will fly on Starliner just as they have been on every crewed mission to space. That was a little segue about Boeing. Now back to SpaceX. Dragon returns from the ISS. The Cargo Dragon 1 capsule that supported TRS-20 has now returned from the ISS. The spacecraft splashed down at around 3 p.m. Eastern Time on April 7th. CRS-20 was the 20th and final mission for SpaceX under NASA's first phase of the commercial resupply contract. With the completion of the mission, Dragon 1 will now be retired and the company will transition to Cargo Dragon 2 for CRS-21 under NASA's Commercial Resupply Service 2. CRS-21 is expected to be launched in October of 2020. The launch of the GPS-3 satellite has now been delayed due to coronavirus. The launch was initially targeted for late April 2020 but is now targeted for no earlier than June 30th. While the space industry manages the risk of the virus, SpaceX seems aggressively committed to its timelines. The next Starlink launch, Starlink V1-L6, is now targeted for no earlier than April 16th. The launch is expected to take place at 5.31pm from LC-39A at Kennedy Space Center in Florida.